This is the booth I was most excited to come shoot. Uh, from last year's AES, the one thing that I left really excited about was analog tube. And I'm here with Simon to explain it. Coming here is kind of like going to the auto show and going to visit Bugatti or Ferrari. You know, most of us are never going to actually be able to buy it, but it's so darn cool that somebody's doing all the work and making these beautiful things. So the main product, I'll just go ahead and let Simon tell you about, but it's really cool and really beautiful, and I'm really glad he's making it. Thank you very much. For, uh, very nice to see you again. The, the, the product you see here spent five years in development, um, was launched at the San Francisco uh, AES last year in October. And uh, I, it's very much in keeping in the spirit of the classic, uh, a classic elect electronics that was around during the 1950s. And it's been kept deliberately that way because uh, I didn't want to build it any, any other way and I didn't want to take anything away from it. I didn't want to add anything to it. I just wanted to build it as it was 50 years ago. And uh, what we have what, what we have here is um, uh, a classic representation of that technology that was around then. All the controls you see on the front here are all as they were back in the 50s. Um, they're all uh, non-inductive, uh, hot-molded carbon composition uh, controls for the AC thresholds here. All the original T-network uh, 1 dB per step attenuators are all as they were, the Davin pots, uh, as they were on the original units. All the grey heel switches we can see here. Um, the attack and release times are all exactly the same um, as they are for all the uh, uh, metering uh, and balance controls uh, switches here, which are also instantly um, uh, grey hill switches. Um, it's a beautiful sounding piece of equipment, uh, not least because it has a very specific application. And uh, in, a, in a console sense, in a recording studio, uh, will allow the user to add dimen dimension, depth, clarity, um, and uh, in a vocal sense will allow you to bring the vocal back up into the mix by adding uh, gain makeup onto the board and ultimately making the vocal louder but still retaining all the top end and all the air and all the bottom end that you expect from an original unit. And uh, I'm actually looking at setting up a demo to get to try one of these myself and I hope I don't like it too much in person. 